and let us all that we can to build a better future. So, in this day and age, we're seeing firsthand how we're losing our freedoms. We're losing our right to actually really question why our system is the way it is. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, we have lawmakers in Washington, D.C. that are all too happy to give money to our organizations like the NSA and FBI that spot, to spy in on us. We have seen how our politicians bail out banks and corporations. We've seen how our politicians give money to the military industrial complex for ridiculous, unending regime change wars. And I want to play this video that former representative Tulsi Gabbard spoke spoke at. And I think it's important that we at least hear these hear these words. James Madison issued a powerful warning. He said of all the enemies to public liberty, war is perhaps the most to be dreaded because it comprises and develops the germ of every other. War is the parent of armies. From these proceed debts and taxes. And armies and debts and taxes are the known instruments for bringing the many under the domination of the few. In war two, the discretionary power of the executive is extended. Its influence in dealing out offices, honors, and emoluments is multiplied. And all the means of seducing the minds are added to those of subduing the force of the people. These same malignant aspect in republicanism may be traced in the inequality of fortunes and the opportunities of fraud growing out of a state of war and in the degeneracy of manners and of morals engendered by both. No nation could preserve its freedom in the midst of continual warfare. I gotta agree with that. Does this sound familiar to you? Eerily familiar. This is the reality of the world that we are living in right now. And I've got a whole long list of just a few examples. We have the Patriot Act that was supposed to sunset after 9-11, but got rubber stamped and continues to be rubber stamped through Congress every time it's about to expire. You've heard about the secret FISA courts, the NSA mass data collection. We've heard about and I've experienced how anyone who speaks out against regime change wars is immediately labeled a dictator lover, an isolationist, and a pacifist. How terrible is it? And what a dark statement it makes to see these politicians who really believe that the only way to de-escalate a conflict or to engage with other countries is through the use of bombs, guns, and sanctions. Again, outstanding words, words that I agree with. Now, you're never going to hear someone like AOC or Bernie Sanders or any Republican or Democratic lawmaker say those kind of statements. You won't hear them talk about that on MSNBC. We've seen firsthand just really how hypocritical both parties are. Both parties are pro-war. Yeah, they talk a good game about diplomacy and peace, but they never follow through with it. The Democratic Party, just like the Republican Party, are beholden to the military-industrial complex to keep on continuing on with ridiculous regime change wars. Since 2001, the United States has been involved in numerous conflicts. When Obama became president, we went from two wars to seven, and it's still ongoing. There's a horrific genocide happening in Yemen. There's an open slave market in Libya. And it just keeps on getting worse and worse. There's a military base, U.S. military base, that's being built in Syria of all places now. And it won't end. It will never end. And our politicians are more than happy to see it continue on. Our politicians are working for their best interest to keep the war machine going. But we must always remember, always remember, that those that speak out against these regime change wars are always vilified by corporate media. It's not just Tulsi Gabbard. It's a lot of people. A lot of people are being vilified. But the thing is, people have a right to ask questions. People have a right to know what is exactly happening. So we're going to time travel 
we're not going to go two years in the past or one year in the past or six months in the past. No, we're actually going to travel all the way back to tomorrow because this right here. Peace groups decry billions more in U.S. military aid as Blinken visits the Ukraine. So as the Biden administration on Thursday announced billions of dollars in additional aid for Ukraine's defense against Russian invaders, peace activists renewed calls for a diplomatic solution to the nearly seven months war. The White House and Congress are fueling this war with a steady stream of weapons instead of pushing for talks to end the conflict. They're never going to end up in the conflict. That's why we, the people, have to rise up with the demand of negotiations, not escalation. Code Pink and other anti-war groups, including Veterans for Peace, World Beyond War Peace Action, are set to launch a global week of action for peace in Ukraine next Monday. Demonstrations are scheduled in U.S. cities, including Washington, D.C., Metropolitan Boston, Milwaukee, Nashville, San Francisco, Santa Barbara, Panadisa. Uh, rather than just push for a protracted war, the White House and Congress should support a diplomatic solution along the lines of the Minsk uh, Two Peace Accord signed by both Ukraine and Russia in 2015 to declare Ukraine a neutral, non-NATO country and hold elections in the eastern region of Ukraine, Code Pink said in a statement announcing uh, the week of action. Instead, the United States government has budgeted $40 billion to escalate the war with weapons, military equipment, troop training, and intelligence with zero accountability or oversight for taxpayer dollars. The same amount of money could have paid for 350,000 nurses or 400,000 elementary school teachers. To which I have to say, unfortunately, we live in a country that profits off a of war. They want to continue it on. They want to have more war all the time. Now, millions of people are suffering because of this ridiculous conflict. And yet the United States is happy to throw billions upon billions of dollars into this conflict, this proxy war. You would think that there would be a call by all politicians worldwide to sit everyone down at the table so that diplomatic talks can take place. But as Tulsi Gabbard has mentioned in that short video, and as have numerous other independent media networks, as numerous other people who've been speaking out about this war in Ukraine have been saying, these politicians are happy to throw money at another war. Democratic and Republican lawmakers they're willing to spend our treasury, our resources, to keep it going. And if not in Ukraine, it's going to be somewhere else. Now, how are we a stable democracy if we still, again, are putting all of our money into war? We've covered on the show our infrastructure is falling apart. Schools are being shut down. And yet somehow, somehow, these politicians are now coming at us in 2022, begging us to vote for them. If you're a Democratic voter, if you're a Republican voter, why are you voting for these politicians? They don't care about you. They don't think about you. They don't respect you. And they're going to spend our treasury on a war, on a ridiculous war, that will have no end. And once that war is over, they're going to find another conflict zone, and another one after that, and another one after that. But if you question, hey, why do we have all this money for war, but not for the people? You're turned into the villain. Social media will censor you and suppress you. The politicians will ignore you. If you're a Democratic voter, if you're a Republican voter, I truly do pity you. And I feel sorry for you because you've been trained to be a good puppet to vote for these politicians, these bloodthirsty politicians that want on going war continuous ongoing war and they're okay with letting us die they're okay with us suffering they don't owe us a goddamn thing these politicians feel that they don't owe us a goddamn thing and the thing is the thing is when you participate in voting democrat or republican you're not doing yourself a favor you got to build organizations and movements that are not connected to Washington, D.C. We have got to show these politicians that they need us more than we need them. When the people lead, that's when the real leaders will follow. And a lot of Americans sh should be uniting together, working together, and voting these bastards out of office, calling them out, confronting them for who they are. And just, just so you know, 
A lot of these politicians are profiting off of insider trading. Some of them have wonderful stock options with the military industrial complex. Democratic and Republican lawmakers who are doing insider trading, people like Nancy Pelosi and her fantastic friends in the Republican Party and in the Democratic Party. They're all doing insider trading and they're profiting off a of war. You think they're going to help you? No. But they'll keep war happening and it's going to destabilize this republic and it will send us down a pathway that we may never recover from.